Hi guys! In this video we'll be looking at the universe, galaxies, solar systems, planets, comets and asteroids, planetary satellites, and then we'll finish with a summary. Before we start talking about the different components of the universe, we first need to define what the universe actually is. And when we study astrophysics and cosmology, we start with the big picture, our universe. And what is the universe? Well, quite simply, the universe is everything that there is. All energy and matter is contained within it. And with modern technologies, we can observe a large part of this universe and its components. And here we can see an example of modern technology, a telescope housed inside an observatory. Now we define the universe, we can talk about one of the most important components of the universe, which are galaxies. In some places in the world, where the air is unpolluted, you might be able to look up into the night sky and see a band of stars stretching across it. What you're seeing is what scientists call the Milky Way Galaxy. And here we have a really nice depiction of the Milky Way Galaxy. Now this Milky Way Galaxy is the home of our sun. It's also home to around 250 billion other stars, as well as tons of interstellar gas and dust. I'm going to draw the position of the sun on one of these arms here. And now you can tell how we can be inside the Milky Way galaxy, but also view it in the night sky. Because if we're standing on Earth looking out, we're able to see this section of the Milky Way and it appears as a bright band of stars across the sky. There are also billions of other stars in the galaxy and in between them, lots of interstellar gas and dust. We define a galaxy as a collection of stars as well as interstellar gas and dust. And now galaxies can form in many different shapes and sizes. We saw in the image of the Milky Way that it had a round bright center with lots of spiral arms coming out of it. And this makes up a category of galaxy called spiral galaxies. We can also have elliptical galaxies, which are shaped like ellipses. And we can have irregular galaxies too. Now, in the observable universe, over 100 billion galaxies have been detected. In this image, we can see a lot of galaxies, all dotted around. But this is not even the tiniest fraction of the amount of galaxies that have been detected in the universe that we can see, or the observable universe. There's an average of around 100 billion stars in each galaxy, which means that there are at least 10 to the 22 stars in the known universe. So if we take 100 billion galaxies, and multiply this by 100 billion stars in each galaxy, we end up with a number of 10 to the 22 stars, which is a really, really huge number. Now we're going to define what a solar system is. A significant proportion of the stars within a galaxy will have planets rotating around them. For example, if we look at this star right here, we can see lots and lots of planets orbiting it. These systems of stars surrounded by planets are called solar systems. Our very own solar system has the sun at its centre, with all of the planets and other bodies rotating around it. And in this image, we have the sun at the centre and lots of planets rotating around it. Now that we've learnt about what a solar system is, we need to have a definition for what a planet is. And we're familiar with the eight planets within our solar system, all orbiting around the sun in the centre. Until around 2006, there was thought to be a ninth planet which is smaller than the others, named Pluto. And you can see Pluto right out here, further away than Neptune. However, when we were able to look further out into the solar system, we found more bodies of a similar size to Pluto orbiting around the Sun. And you can see these bodies drawn on here. In order to distinguish these other bodies from the larger planets we find close to the Sun, a new definition of a planet was needed. And this definition states that a planet is an object which first of all orbits a star, which we can see is satisfied by all of the planets going around the sun. Secondly, the planets have to have a large enough mass for its own gravity to give it a spherical shape. So this planet here with a mass m needs to have a large enough mass so that the gravitational force on it, g, will be large enough to give it a spherical shape. Planets are also not hot enough to burn hydrogen in their cores through the fusion process. You don't need to know any of the details of the fusion process for now, because we'll be covering it later. But you just need to remember that no hydrogen to helium fusion occurs in the planet's core. Finally, a planet must have cleared its orbital path around its star, so very few objects such as asteroids will get in its way as it moves around the star. 
on some of these diagrams, you might have noticed all of these bodies here, which are asteroids residing in the asteroid belt. These are not planets, because as you can see, there are lots of them all in a very small space, and they'll be getting each other's way as they move around the sun. By contrast, a planet such as Saturn is moving around a clear orbit with nothing getting in its way. So it's a planet and the asteroids are not. This is also important when we think about Pluto, because Pluto has not cleared its orbital path around the sun, and so cannot be defined as a planet. Instead, we call it a dwarf planet. So in Pluto's orbit, there are other bodies which get in the way. Now let's talk about some of the other bodies in our solar system, namely comets and asteroids. We've already seen that our solar system contains both planets and dwarf planets orbiting around the sun. But what else is held within our solar system? Both planets and dwarf planets occasionally will collide with other bodies as they orbit the sun. These bodies are almost always either asteroids or comets. And on the left, you can see a depiction of an asteroid. And on the right, a depiction of a comet. Now let's talk about a few of the key characteristics of asteroids. They are rocky, irregularly shaped bodies that are typically much smaller than planets. Comets are icy bodies made up of ice, dust and rock that can be anything from a few hundred metres to tens of kilometres across. So this comet here could be 100 metres or it could be 10,000 metres across. Another special feature of comets is that they have extremely eccentric orbits around the sun that reach into the distant horizon of our solar system before whirling back close to the sun. And here you can see a planetary orbit in contrast to the much more eccentric comet orbit. If you've ever seen a comet, or even a photo of a comet, you'll have noticed their very distinctive long tail. And as comets approach the sun, they will develop bright tails of gas and dust. So here we have the comet, and here is its distinctive tail, which makes them very easy to identify in the night sky. The final object we're going to consider are planetary satellites. Another major type of body within our solar system we have not yet considered are planetary satellites. For example, a moon or a communication satellite. We define planetary satellites as bodies in orbit around a planet. The moon is an example of a natural satellite orbiting the Earth. And there's a nice diagram here of the moon orbiting the Earth. Although the Earth has one moon, planets can have a number of moons. For example, Jupiter has 53. And these range from very, very tiny moons to really big ones. Planetary satellites can also be man-made, and these are often used in communications and navigation systems. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap by smiley face, and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.